let me research and find out. And I was curious about this always. So way back, uh, Abraham Zalkin, uh, if I pronounce it right, Z-A-L-E-Z-N-I-K, um, in uh, in the Harvard Business Review, uh, came out with an article called Managers and Leaders, Are They Different? That's what the topic was. And uh, that went on, And but it was John Cotter who defined it. Uh, so I just went through various definitions of what he says. He said there is a difference between management and uh, leadership. He said management is coping up with complexity and leadership is all about making choices. Now, this is all what I know. By itself, uh, Kujo Cho or, or Han Cho, which means that you now have a perspective on what you're leading. And so from my perspective, leaders need to be good managers. Uh, from uh, the leadership side is really behavior. The management side is really results. And so from a Toyota perspective, the the way leaders are are evaluated and then what the expectation is, is by achieving results through good behaviors. The leadership side of it is influencing with good behaviors and, and and to the point of being able to achieve the results and and the the good results must come both through the influence of good behaviors on others uh as well as managing all the elements that that would actually result in good results so the the results needs management more than than say the people so i kind of like dr stephen covey's uh, concept of is that that leaders lead people, managers manage things and processes. You can't manage people and you can't lead things, right? So I thought that was pretty that was that was pretty boiled down to exactly what it is. And in our perspective, that all leaders have a level of management, even if that's information around how well we develop our people and where are they at in in their skills and capability development, right? It's because we want to make sure people develop to their full potential. So we'll need to have to use uh, something like a plan for every person, even though we're going to lead and influence them and, and challenge them, which is leadership. Uh, we also might have to be aware of the information around their capability, which also helps us to get to a point where we, we put a plan together with, to develop somebody. Uh, in Toyota, this is something we call an individual development plan, or we will also call it part of OJD, on-the-job development, which is a four-step process for actually developing capabilities in people. So uh, so leadership is, is about influencing through good behaviors, and management is about uh, influencing processes and managing those processes to get good results. So when you look at good results, good behaviors, that's what we're looking for. So clearly leaders must be also capable of managing any, any processes or anything that needs to support uh, the outcome of good results through good behaviors. So what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, uh, however, uh, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. And uh, since you are a uh, 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 combat ready veteran always ready to be uh off to the field and uh i i uh, i was asked by an american pharmaceutical company called baxter to do a lean boot camp in india and i did that for about two or three years uh, here in india because uh, they thought uh, it's far cheaper and we expose more people so the first thing they asked is what the hell is boot camp so, yeah. So he said, "Look, that comes from the, so the seal, the marine, and all when they get the boots on the ground." And so, let me ask you this: During uh, the peacetime, you have a clear hierarchy in your army of command and control, and what have you. It is across the world. So, however, when the war starts, every individual, every other uh, thing, they are not going to ask for the general or whoever it is where to shoot. They become leaders at that point of time. Does this anomaly, uh, this uh, analogy apply uh, 
in an organization like Toyota, they have an hierarchy. And so I just, what, what I'm looking at is, there's a, there has to be a clear distinction. Who does Hoshin, for example? They say leadership. They do the strategy. They do whatever it is. Uh, but then they have the catch ball or whatever. I'm not getting into that sort of a thing. But who does the Hoshin? Who does the vision in Toyota per se? Uh, where does the leadership start there? Well, uh, so the the from a Toyota perspective, Hoshin now is the enterprise management system. It used to be more policy deployment, but it really is the breakthrough vision. So it has to be organizationally. Uh, so Hoshin applies or, uh, at every level. Everybody inside of Toyota is connected to the Hoshin because it is literally the Hoshin is literally enterprise management system under uh, under an influence of also something called MAST, which is the management uh, system uh, for Toyota. Um, and so today, Hoshin is the targets are set by by the senior executive leadership. And, and so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But part of that, whose role is it to to develop the Hoshin? It's everybody's role. In fact, if you can actually tell who actually developed the Hoshin, you probably haven't gotten it right. Uh, because the, the management, the management executive team looks and says, you know, what do we need to do to be at the leading edge of technology in over the next 10 years? Uh, so, or what do we need to create a better uh, home light uh, atmosphere? And then they look out 10 years and they say, what capability do we need to uh, provide both from a service technology or from a product standpoint and say, what's breakthrough for us? And then they'll set targets that include also how, what's the finance, what kind of financial uh, investment do we need to make to be able to to uh, to afford, you know, achieving that breakthrough or aspirational uh, uh, target? And and this, then so uh, sorry, sorry, Sam. This aspirational target, this vision of what has to be done two years from now, three years from now, uh, is done at what level? Which uh, at, at, at the ex at, at the executive levels. So think of it at the the president of let's say Tico Toyota Industries. Uh, for example, that will be set by the CEO and the executive team uh, as part of what we call one voice leadership from that level. Here's where we're going to go over the next 10 years. And very rarely is it something like next two years, three years. It's going to be something that's going to be the next 10, seven to 10 years, 25 years, even a little bit further. Uh, and so what they start with at Toyota is what they call is Sakichi Toyota's five precepts and they look at what those five precepts are and then they they cascade that into the future and say aspirationally 10 years from now what does it mean to be on the vanguard of the times and to be ahead of the times or or to be the leader in technology uh and so they'll look and say well what do, who do we want to be aspirationally and then what product services and technology do we want to provide for that time and so then what happens is you get a uh, what's called a, a Hoshin theme, and that theme goes to the old organiz uh, uh, the whole organization. For example, back in 2012 at Tico, the, um, the, the theme was what they called uh, K21. Uh, so they, want, they wanted back in 2011, 2012 to be at a particular place in performance by the year 2021. Now they're in the process of, of refining the next uh, 10 year Hoshin uh, currently. So, uh, so, but it, it's very, uh, it's very conversational. The concept behind, behind K21 was that they wanted to be better by 200% by 2021. And they would revise that every year, but as a 10 year journey year over year to get to that point. So they either want to take whatever the current measures were and improve them by 200%, two to one, or they wanted to cut negative uh, type of measurements or KPIs by half. So, so they wanted to either cut it two to one, improve by two to one or cut by half. So it became very conversational and it wasn't, oh, we want to improve by 10% or we didn't want to improve by 15%. 
that said, take your current measures, whatever your measure is, okay, year over year for the next 10 years, we want to we want to get to the point where we have a 200% improvement year over year. If we if we provide one product today, let's provide two products by 2021 for that one product. Uh, so that so that they can improve the mix. If we had a technology today, you know, let's let's provide two products by 2021 where we have one today. So so it's very conversational. It's very understandable. You could talk to anybody in the organization about what K21 stood for. They could tell you, oh, we need to either double our our good performance or cut in half our 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 bad performing KPIs. And at that point, you can always take the current state and then apply that 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 thematic mathematical model, and you knew what you needed to shoot for. And so the targets are set by senior leadership, uh, by the executive team. And then we have what we call Gimba operations, which are the production plants, even though they may have 10,000 people working at them. That is, that's the Gimba operations. Uh, and so they, they're more of a cost center where the product provides the profit. The job of the, of the production centers is to reduce the cost associated with that product. So whenever a chief engineer designs a new product to, to offer two products for one or two variations for one, that's where the profit comes from inside of, of Toyota's through that new model mix. But it's the job of the production facilities through the production system uh, to eliminate waste in order to create the margin necessary to reduce the cost of goods sold. That's done by the production system itself. So in Toyota, the point of that is through Toyota Lean Management and the Toyota production system is actually designed to reduce cost inside of the cost of goods sold and then turn over the operating income uh, within a very short period of time. Ideally, what happens is you, you recover the cost of good to goods sold uh, before you have accounts payables. Accounts receivables come in inside of the windows of accounts payable, and then you earn additional funding from that. One of the big things that comes out of that, okay, let's improve by 200% or let's cut in half. We take any given KPI, then the team, the next level team through the catch ball process, then actually develops what we call sub KPIs, which are the leading indicators. So it is the next level team inside of Toyota that decides, well, what will we measure that will influence that lagging indicator, which is a KPI or the targets that management gave us in, in a nebulous form. Uh, so, so what happens is each level of the organization, the leadership one level down grabs their sub KPIs and that becomes their KPIs. Uh, and then their team then comes up, okay, how do we influence that KPI? So I think a lot of what gets lost in the thoughts of leader standard work and tier boards is that the boards are all different inside of Toyota. They're, they're a, man, a visualized form of their management system. And they what's on a board is what they need to manage to influence the sub KPIs that will influence leading indicators that will have an influence on the lagging indicators one level up, which is the KPI. Uh, so, so when it comes to Hoshin, that will go all the way down to the team member or to a leader uh, in the organization, either at the management level, uh, which would be above the floor management system, uh, where everyone has an individual development plan which connects to their team and them uh, supporting the Hoshin for the next 10 years. And the annual Hoshin uh, is really just what are we going to do this year to get us one year closer to our long-term Hoshin? And I think that's where a lot of people don't understand how Hoshin works is that there's not really an annual Hoshin per se as a Hoshin, the Hoshin's long term. And year by year, we get closer to that aspirational breakthrough goal that may be seven to 10 years down the road. So what are we going to do this year 
to move toward that aspirational goal or that breakthrough goal? And what capabilities do we need to build this year to get closer? Because by the time we reach the, well, let's say 2021 or, or 2031, what capabilities does the organization need to have from people and processes and procedures, right? So it's going to take us year over year to get close to that, right? So uh, so by having the long-term hotion and then constantly looking at where are we at today and how much closer this year, what are we going to do this year? How do we need to modify our, our goals in order to leverage getting closer to a long-term vision? Uh, it's a year over year journey to get to that aspirational state of the organization's enterprise uh, aspirations, uh, whether that's the woven city, whether that is, uh, you know, providing joy through uh, driving or whether that's helping your your customers carry their load as they like to use in, in Toyota material handling. Uh, but what is key about that, what we think about as tier boards, um, they're different at every level because the majority of the boards are what are the routines and what are the visuals that I need for my level to manage my KPIs and sub KPIs that are going to influence us toward achieving the Hoshin for this year and 10 years down the road. So um, there, there's not a per se annual Hoshin that's like a big business strategy. The strategy is 10 years down the road. Uh, so it's very long-term vision, but you achieve that. It's a journey, right? So you achieve that strategy year over year. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, just, uh, just for my clarification, uh, according to, again, Carter, he says that uh, what leaders really do is to prepare organization for a change. He makes a distinction that the leaders uh, prepare the organization for the change, while the management, uh, he, uh, he says, is coping up with complexity. So all these KPIs, so... Uh, <clears throat> It's a clear distinction that he makes that leadership is looking for what needs to be uh, done for the change that is coming in future. That is what he said. We'll have 200%, whatever it is, looking at whatever market, etc. Uh, and uh, the management uh, level, they said, is coping up with whatever complexity that arises uh, to achieve that sort of a vision. So in Toyota, or because there's a lot of mess up when people talk about leadership and uh, management, and uh, there's probably a fuzzy line between that, but I'm just sticking to this definition of leaders look uh, what to, to, to make a choice for the change, while the uh, managers look at the complexity to achieve that sort of a change. Yeah, but so I... I find that a little not to take away from Dr. Cotter on that, but but from a Toyota perspective, we don't separate that. I mean, there's nothing more complex than a human being, you know. So leaders have to deal with complexity in human relations, right? And influence. And uh I, you know, a CEO also deals with complexity in organizational structures, architectures, and business processes while they still establish a vision for the organization, which is supported by the board of directors. But he, they also have to influence that uh, into the organization. And I think that's where, you know, the Toyota style leadership uh, doesn't separate the role of management. We expect that leaders are good managers, the higher, you know, the, 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 the further you get in the organization and the, the the uh, broader your your scope of influence the more complex the problems are so uh, as a leader you've got to engage uh by with and through other people uh to to deal with the complexities at the level of of the the people work and the the process and the system and the strategy and the policy uh when it comes to hoshian 
and I'll give you a good example of this. Back when uh, when there was a rumor going around that uh, that the idea of Toyota is to produce where you sell, and the Lexus was being made in Ontario, Canada, but it honestly doesn't make sense for a, a brand that is predominantly sold in the United States to be made in Canada. That then that that stretches out the supply chain. And it also uh, un makes it unstable. Uh, and you're also dealing with exchange rates and you're also dealing with uh, Canadian labor practices and other things. So if you sell majority of your Lexus in the United States, well, then generally Toyota's philosophy is you make it in the United States. And so the idea was to bring the Lexus to the United States. Now, no one really knew at the time where the production facility was going to be. But the then president uh, before Susan Eckhart uh, was w Will James. And, and Will was the president of Toyota Motor Manufacturing in Kentucky. Uh, and, and so people started to ask him, can we bring the Lexus here to, to uh, TMMK? And, um, and the, the difference was that the, from a policy perspective and a performance perspective, to be able to, even with the quality of a Toyota, the uh, the quality requirements for a Lexus are about 300% higher or better than even for a Toyota uh, just because of the market it serves as, as a performance and luxury vehicle. So it, the, the role of the role of will at that point was to create a vision to inspire his his team at uh, TMMK, to think of the possibility of, of getting the performance up before he would even go to Japan and ask for the opportunity to bring the Lexus to Kentucky. So he had to go out and say, okay, we need to really focus on quality. So they, in the what we call the gray paint area there at TMMK, uh, and in the quality area, they had to really blow out every element of quality, even things that are acceptable for a Toyota couldn't be acceptable anymore. So policy around quality and quality functions deployment really had to beef up. Um, there were also labor practices that pol new policies had to be changed. Uh, for example, uh, before Will came back in as president, the, the team leader role had been kind of decommissioned a little bit, and he needed the team leaders to be there to respond to problems, to be able to deal with the quality issue and bring up the overall quality and production on Toyotas. Um, and so he brought back in team leaders and made sure we had the right ratios and so forth. The other thing that had to happen, and that role is very specific, and the management system for a team leader is very specific, had to build up the training of all the team members and make sure we got back into team member rotation. Uh, some of the higher levels of what would be the Jidoka pillow had to be put back in place. Uh, the other thing that had to happen was that there was a labor policy or a, a an institutional policy that said that if you got to a certain level, if there was an open in another department, you could move to that that other department if you had seniority. Well, when if you had a group leader, which is roughly at Toyota, a little bit of a production manager and a supervisor combined together. Um, and uh, and so when you got to a certain level of seniority, you, you could bid to go to another department. The problem is, is when you leave that department, since most of our, quote, group leaders come up from being team members and team leaders and then group leaders, and, you know, then you're moving to another department. When you move to that other department, you take all that institutional knowledge and problem solving knowledge and that processing knowledge with you. And there was just no way you were going to achieve the level of process quality that was necessary by losing that 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 leader with their problem solving knowledge and their and their organic processes going to another department that may have none of that. Uh, so so one of the things that was kind of a touchy element for for the HR team and uh, for for Will was changing that policy where if you came up in a department, you had to stay in that department. 
in order to achieve the levels of quality and improve by 300%, all of the quality metrics, uh, then, you know, those leaders had to stay in the department. So that required a policy change. So, you know, again, the part of that is, is that management would change the policy. Leadership has to go out and influence the people that that policy change is going to is going to affect. You have to let people know ahead of time those things which have an impact on them, right? Good old TWI job relations. So it was Will and his and, and all the different communications and leadership platforms he created to to go out and communicate and influence and get buy-in and gain consensus with everyone that would be affected by these policy changes. Uh, he had to go lead people to that vision of here's where we want to go. If you really want to have the Lexus come here to Kentucky, then I'm going to have to go sell that we can meet the quality requirements and the performance requirements. And this is what it's going to take to do that. So the policy would be management. Going and selling the change in the policy and communicating is leadership. And, and from my perspective, yeah, leaders can lead change. Leaders can just lead results, but uh, but but they also make people and leaders, right? So so if you're going to make a change for the better, which is our continuous improvement, or even kaikaku, kai, kai, kai which is radical change, which was what was happening in this particular case, then the policy needed to change management, but the leader who was making the policy change needed to go communicate that gain consensus, get buy-in, listen to find out, you know, what were the unintended consequences of that change, and then mitigate those unintended consequences. Well, that's leadership. And so you can't make a change. Uh, you, if you're going to make a change, you're going to change policy. That's management. Then you have to go lead it and influence it to achieve the change in order to get the vision, which is to you know, bring the quality requirement up to three, 300% better in order to even be in a position to go ask for the Lexus business. There was a lot more going on behind the scenes there too, but that was the big performance for TMMK was the fact that the vision was, yeah, we'll go compete for it. Uh, other people are going to want to do it as well. Plus, you know, the Toyota motor sales or the Lexus motor sales didn't really want to mix the brand. So when people started to think about Lexus being produced at Kentucky, they'd start thinking, well, all I'm getting do what I'm getting is a more expensive Toyota. So there was a lot of other leadership that had to happen up and across the organization in into other business units in order to bring Lexus to uh, Kentucky. That was a long-term hotion for for Will James. Uh, it was to bring that business there. And it was the Hoshin that was envisioned by TMMK as well, because the people at Kentucky knew it was going to come to the United States. Why not bring it here and then support our community? So, but policy change had to be made. Structural organizational architecture needed to be changed or at least returned to the standard. Uh, you had to be able to get the process knowledge up in place. Uh, the targets were set, but each team had to come up with how would they influence to achieve the target. So, uh, so yeah, the what we monitored was was different. You know, the KPI boards changed. You know, if there was more need to to monitor quality than than internal lead time, well, then that's where more measures went up. The team itself decided what that was going to be. It wasn't dictated to them. The only thing that Will shared with them is we need to improve by 300% before I'll even go to Japan. Does that So that's really what I'm talking about when you take Hoshin and then the leader who sets the target also must go influence through leadership the target that was set as part of management. The leadership, that same leader that set the management target must go influence people and inspire them to want to be part of that change for the better.